Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Miss Miller's Read Alouds. I promised that I would come back and I would reread the story, The Magic School Bus Inside the Hurricane, and talk to you about all the little text details that are inside this book. As you notice, the cover of the book says, The Magic School Bus Inside a Hurricane. This bus has a name and it's called Hurricane Frizzle, which you know is the teacher from the story. She's always going on these wacky adventures. Um, and then over here it says Hurricane Evacuation Route. I wonder what kind of trouble they're going to get themselves into today or what kind of adventure they'll get themselves into today. Inside a hurricane, and there's the little, what's his name? What's this little lizard's name? I'm sure you guys know, you've probably read the stories. The Magic School Bus, Inside a Hurricane by Joanna Cole. She's the author. She's the person who writes the story writes the words for the story. And then it's illustrated by Roos Degen. He is the person who um, draws the pictures, all of these intricate pictures. This is, an, this is a dedication page. She is the Magic School Bus editor, and we like her with to credit her to Phoebe, yeah, our sunny day. Something that authors do. Okay, I'm gonna move the book like this so you can see as I'm reading. Have you heard about our teacher, Miss Frizzle? Her clothes are wild, her school bus is wacky, and her class trips are weird. Whenever we study something in her class, we get into it in a really big way. Miss Frizzle says, class, to understand weather, we have to know about the sun. One of the students says, it's a hot topic. And here's their temperature record, their recording um, Dorothy Ann and Tim are recording the day's weather, the morning and the afternoon. You could see the changes. And here we go. They're um, moving the thermometer up and down as the weather is changing so that it can match what the weather is outside. Here's a question answer. Why is the temperature usually higher in the afternoon? The answer to that is because by the afternoon, the sun has been warming things up all day. Did you know that, boys and girls? Let's move on to the next page and see what kind of wacky things we got going on here. We were learning about weather. Absolutely everything in our room was about rain or snow or sun or wind. Every kid in the class was doing a weather project. We were even listening to weather reports on Miss Frizzle's radio. This girl says, at my old school, we didn't have all these projects. This says, anemometer, it measures wind force, Wind, force, and speed. At my old school, our teacher didn't dress that way. The radio says, and now for the weather. This says today's math. Look, it's even about weather. Everything weather with Miss Frizzle. And then the spelling words. Sun, rain, drizzle, hail, don't. Hmm. Your, wind, snow, sleet, hurricane, forget an umbrella. And all the stories are about weather. Even the superhero is about weather. He's Weatherman, Mr. Weatherman. We go on this next page. So, we weren't surprised one morning when Miss Frizzle said, it's a perfect day for our trip to the weather station. Here's a report someone wrote. It says, the earth is wrapped in a blanket of air. Tim wrote it. Here's the earth and here's, it's wrapped in atmosphere. It says, our atmosphere is a blanket of air hundreds of miles thick. Most of our weather happens in the troposphere, the eight miles of air that is closest to the Earth. And here's a diagram of that where it shows Earth, the troposphere, the stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere. Those are the pieces of our atmosphere. This boy says, this girl says, I can't see it. Can you guys see here? Hmm. Miss Frizzle says, we have to under we have to know about air to understand weather. She says, we'll meet a team of weather forecasters. We'll learn about our atmosphere. And this child says, and we have to know about water too. This says, air is a mixture of invisible gases by Shirley. And Ralphie says, air has weight. A balloon with air in it is heavier than an empty balloon. And then Wanda says, air contains water. When water evaporates, water molecules go into the air. There's so much going on in this book. It's so lovely. 
We haven't finished our experiments about the air, but Miss Frizzle at but with Miss Frizzle at the wheel, we were going, ready or not. Sorry, I can't go, Miss Frizzle. I have to sharpen my pencil. If you guys have ever read these stories before, Arnold's always afraid. But Arnold, maybe we'll have a real adventure. And he he's thinking in his head, that's the thought bubble. In that case, I have to sharpen several pencils. He's looking for a way out. Then over here it says, question, when does the weather change? Answer, when the air changes by Shirley. Number one, is the air hot or cold? Number two, is it dry or moist? Number three, is it still or moving? When these things change, the weather changes. And then the radio is telling them, look for a change in the weather, folks. In no time, we were riding along in the old school bus. We were trying to get some music on the radio. We didn't see Miss Frizzle turning a strange little dial on the dashboard. We didn't notice that the bus was changing. This by Arnold says what makes wind. A mass of heavy air rolls in and pushes on the mass of lighter air. When the air masses move, that is wind. Winds range from gentle breezes to strong gales that can destroy things. This says wind is just air that is moving, children. Listeners, winds are picking up speed. That radio won't play music. All it does is give the weather. It figures. Make sure the whole piece is in the view. All of a sudden, Dorothy Ann said, look, we couldn't believe it. We were all wearing our flying suits. We were sitting in a basket. The sun had turned into a hot air balloon and we were about to lift off. This girl says, at my old school, we never went into hot air balloons. This one says, sounds like my kind of school. I bet that was Arnold. We'll be using this gas burner to heat the air in the balloon. Heat makes air expand by Molly. Hot air expands because heat makes air molecules bounce far apart. Number one, balloon. Room temperature air inside. The air expands and flows into the balloon. Hot water heats the air. Ask an adult for help when using very hot water. Two words from Dorothy Ann. When something expands, it spreads out. Air molecules are the tiniest bits of air. We started going up and Miss Frizzle said, did I mention children that hot air rises? This says class, every day all over the world, scientists send up special balloons to take weather measurements. Hmm, I didn't know that. We're going up. Wow. There's the weather balloon. Over here it says, see hot air rise by Alex and Rachel. Number one, cut out a spiral. Number two, needle and thread. The light bulb heats the air. The warm air rises and makes the paper spiral spin. Oh, that looks like a really cool one. Boys and girls, you should try that out. Why does hot air rise by Carlos? Hot air is lighter than cool air, so it floats on top of the cold air, the way a marshmallow floats on hot chocolate. We rose higher and higher, even though hot air was filling the balloon. The air around us was going was growing colder. We had to put on warm jackets. It's cold up here. You're not afraid of high places, are you, Arnold? We know Arnold, he's afraid of everything. That radio spoke to me. How did it know my name? I knew I should have stayed home today, poor Arnold. Going up, better bundle up by Phoebe. Brr. Warm air rises from earth. As it goes up, it gets colder. You can't see it, but it's all around you. What is it? Air. Look, he's reading the reading from a riddle book. <laughs> Two birds reading. That's funny. Warm air rising from the earth carries lots of water vapor molecules, Miss Frizzle continued. As the air rises, it cools down. The water condenses in the air and forms clouds. Did you bring your raincoat, Arnold? Now the radio is talking to Arnold. Tell me this isn't happening, he's thinking. 
A Weather Word by Dorothy Ann. When water condenses, when water condenses, molecules of water vapor join together and make drops of liquid water. Boys and girls, what is liquid water? Yep, rain, 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 rain. <clears throat> we drifted into the center of a cloud. Miss Frizzle was right. It was damp in there. The cloud was made of tiny water droplets hanging in the air. It says, when is the teacher bringing her class? This is the weather guy wondering. Not till later, much later. What kind of clouds are forming around Miss Frizzle and the kids? You see them up there? Three kinds of clouds by Wanda. <clears throat> Curly or wispy clouds are called cirrus. Two, layered clouds are called stratus. Three, lumpy and puffy clouds are called cumulus. Let's find out what happens on the next page. Inside the cloud, droplets began coming together. They formed bigger and bigger drops. As the drops became heavier, they started falling. What makes rain clouds turn dark? By Gregory. Rain clouds have lots of ice crystals and big, heavy raindrops. These block out the sun. Our Rainmaking Project by Amanda, Jane, and Arnold. Ice, tongs, oven mitt, tin can, water droplets. That's another really cool one, but you have to ask your parents about this one. When you use the stove, remember to ask an adult for help. They told you to. Okay. It takes thousands of droplets to form just one raindrop. Most classes stay in on raining days. Not Miss Frizzle's class. Down below, the weather forecasters were standing in the rain. They didn't see us inside the cloud, but we could hear their voices. One of them said, I hope that teacher knows there's a hurricane watch in effect. Check out my hurricane watch, Arnold. Get it? Hurricane watch? I'm pretending I can't hear. What is a hurricane by Flurry? <clears throat> a hurricane is one of the most violent kinds of storms. In a hurricane, winds swirl in a circle around the storm center at 74 miles per hour or more. More words from Dorothy Ann. A hurricane watch means that a hurricane may strike within the next 36 hours. A hurricane warning means that a hurricane is likely to strike within the next 24 hours. A warning is more urgent than a watch. As usual, Miss Frizzle paid no attention. She turned up the fire and more hot air rushed into the balloon. As we rose above the cloud, the wind started pushing us south. Before long, we had traveled thousands of miles. Miss Frizzle said we were above the tropical ocean, about 500 miles north of the equator. It says, wow, look at that water. We can go swimming and windsurfing and snorkeling. It says, what is the equator? The equator is an imaginary line around the Earth's middle. It divides the globe into two equal parts. The top and the bottom are north and south. Why is it hotter near the equator by Michael? Because the way the Earth is tilted, the Earth's rays almost always shine towards the Earth's middle. This means there are no win cold winters there. Here's the sun, most direct waves, and you see they're pointing towards our imaginary line, which is the equator, North Pole, South Pole, and it says the tropics in the orange. Below us, blue-green waves were sparkling. On a sandy island, palm trees were waving. It looked like a vacation paradise to us, but Frizzle said, class, we have now arrived at one of the world's hurricane breeding grounds. Nearly all hurricanes get started over warm tropical oceans, kids. I've heard that hurricanes are dangerous. So Miss Frizzle is taking us to one? She would. Why do hurricanes have names by Carmen? Often, more than one hurricane is brewing at once. It's easier to keep track of them if they're given names. Some famous names, Agnes, Andrew, Bob, Elena, Gilbert, Gloria, Ivan, Katrina. What's happening, Gloria? Hi, Bob. Like the two hurricanes are talking. Where do hurricanes begin? By Tim. In tropical waters near the equator. So he's showing, Tim's showing in a diagram. 
Here's the equator line, and then here's where all of the tropical storms are starting. Okay, this is a really great graphic. Um, class, remember that as hot air rises from the ocean surface, the water vapor in the air condenses and forms clouds, said the frizz. Down below, more hot air rushed in from all sides to take the place of the rising air in the middle of, in the middle of the rising air. A column of sinking air formed. We started sinking with it. So here's sinking air. Here's the water. Here's the winds, and they're blowing up, and the water vapor condenses, and it's starting to spin. When is hurricane season? By Rachel. Most hurricanes begin in the late summer and early fall. That is when tropical oceans are the warmest. The warmer the ocean is, the stronger the hurricane is likely to become. Yikes. Oh dear, said Miss Frizzle. The balloon must have sprung a leak. Hot air was rushing out and the balloon was plummeting fast. Jump ship, class, shouted Frizz. She jumped overboard and we went after her. Right away we knew it was a big mistake. Here's Arnold. I can't look. Hurry up and jump, Arnold. Follow me, kids. This from Amanda Jane says, Do all the tropical storms become hurricanes? And it says, No. All around the world, there are more than 100 tropical storms each year. Only about 60 of them grow to hurricane strength, and only a handful of those ever reach places where people go, where people live. I'm sorry. The wind was blowing the clouds into a huge circle. The storm is starting to take on the typical shape of a hurricane. Isn't it fascinating, children? shouted Miss Frizzle. It says, what makes hurricane winds blow in a circle? by Alex. Winds begin by blowing straight, but the movement of the earth as it spins on its axis makes them curve. So it shows here in the picture how it, they curve. The faster winds blow, the more they curve. Hurricane winds are very fast, so they curve and curve until they make a circle. They say, help, we're going around in circles. I'm getting dizzy. And then here on the next page, we have Miss Frizzle. Does she look worried at all? I don't think so. It was more than fascinating. It was terrifying. We were caught in the edge of a storm, blowing around and around in a giant whirlwind. That whirlwind was a hurricane. A typical hurricane has a lifespan of about 10 days. 10 days, wow. Listeners will be telling you about the whole hurricane. Maybe its batteries will run out soon, says Arnold. How big is a hurricane by John? Hurricanes are enormous. Each one is about 10 miles high and 300 to 600 miles wide. Where, where we are in the hurricane, so we can see them over here. Let's see what happens. In the clouds around us, huge bolts of lightning were flashing. We thought it was all over for us, but then we saw the bus again. And it had become a weather plane, the kind that explores hurricanes. We tumbled into a rescue chute and fell into the plane. That is, the bus, or we mean the plane? And this says... During a thunderstorm, light, lightning can make more electricity than a big city uses in a week. Wow. It's our bus. It looks different. Let's get on now. Come back. Who's that over there? <laughs> maybe he was, um, maybe there was some justification to his worry. Lightning is electricity by Ralphie. Clouds become charged with electricity when the voltage gets high enough. Electricity leaps from one place to another. Then we see lightning. Lightning is hot by Keisha. A lightning bolt reaches a temperature of 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about five times hotter than the sun's surface. So boys and girls, if you were hit by lightning, would it be a good thing? Absolutely not. Stay inside when that happens. Thunder crashed and boomed. We covered our ears. Miss Frizzle turned the plane and we were headed straight toward the center of the storm. Wait a minute, they said the center, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. We had the feeling someone was missing. 
We are now experiencing the hurricane close up. But not to worry, Arnold. I'm sure we'll be fine. Why does everything always have to happen to me? This report says, Thunder is a sound made by air by Phoebe. Lightning heats up air and makes it expand. Thunder is the sound of the air expanding. When you open a soft drink can, you can hear pop. That's the sound of air expanding. It's just like thunder, only much smaller. We flew through the, the miles of thunderstorms and Miss Frizzle took roll call. Guess who was missing? Arnold. He had fallen and missed the plane. Thunderstorms, rain, rain, and more rain by Flory. In 20 minutes, one thunderstorm sends down 125 million gallons of water. It's a lot of water. Arnold is now experiencing the hurricane up close, but not to worry. I'm sure he'll be fine. Arnold fell? Poor kid. Oh, no. Now here's where they are in the hurricane. There's Arnold. Miss Frizzle marked Arnold absent and flew straight into the storm. We're flying into the hurricane. What a disaster. Why does everything always happen to us? We'll be seeing stormy seas today, Arnold. Seeing stormy seas. I'm touching them, smelling them, gulp, tasting them. It says SS School Bus. The farther in we went, the faster the winds blew. At last, we came to the inner hurricane and entered the eye wall, a ring of heavy clouds around the storm center. In the eye wall, the winds were blowing the fastest yet, and the rain was coming down in sheets. How fast do the winds blow inside a hurricane? By Carmen. Outer hurricane, 90, 40 miles an hour. Miles, MPH is miles per hour. Middle hurricane, middle of the hurricane, 74 miles per hour. Inner hurricane, 120 to 150 miles per hour. Wow, that's fast. How fast is the wind blowing at the eye wall, kids? So here is the eye wall. There's the eye. The eye's the center. There's Arnold. And they're just about at the eye. The eye wall is the fiercest part of the hurricane. We're encountering turbulence class. Turbulence is when air violently is disturbed. I am violently disturbed. All around were columns of air called hot towers or chimneys. They were sucking up more and more hot, moist air from the ocean. The heat energy from the air was feeding the storm and making it stronger. The plane was shaking and so were we. So it says, here's the eye, cold air is going down, and then there's those hot towers going up. The warm air is at the ocean and it's going up. It says, I'm all shook up. It says, please stay seated, class. Hey, kid, how did you get out here? It's a long story. Waves will be as high as a house. The wind speed is 40 miles per hour here. Then suddenly everything went quiet. Class, we have encountered the eye or center of the hurricane, announced Miss Frizzle. The ocean waves still crashed below and the winds howled outside, but in the eye only gentle breezes flew. Up above, the sky was blue and the sun was shining. We relaxed and enjoyed ourselves. They're probably thinking, it's about time. It's quiet in the eye of the hurricane by Carlos. The fierce swirling winds of the hurricane do not enter the center of the storm. Winds, winds, and see he's in the center. So here's Arnold. Here's the eye wall. There's where they are, right in the center. Peace and quiet. Bal balmy breezes. So I guess if you were in the center of a hurricane, you would think that um, everything was okay. But in reality, it's not. We flew about 30 miles across the eye. Then the frizz called out. We will enter the other side of the eye wall now. Don't go, we cried, but the plane was already on its way. Back to the hurricane's fierce wind and rain. Why don't hurricane winds blow into the eye by Shirley? The winds swirl in toward the eye of the storm, but they do not enter it because they are pushed out by the same force that pushes you outward when you spin around. Interesting. 
We're trying to reach land before the full force of the hurricane hits. Good idea. The hurricane is approaching land. There will be heavy flooding along the coast, says the radio. <clears throat> the entire hurricane was moving across the ocean towards the land, and we were going with it. The right forward corner of the hurricane, as you were looking toward the land, has the strongest wind and the rain and the highest ocean wave, shouted the frizz. Naturally, she flew directly to that part. So look at it shows most damage will be done here. So here's the land. Here's the hurricane swirling, and it's swirling towards land. How hurricanes travel by Wanda. When a hurricane started, starts, it usually moves slowly about 10 to 20 miles per hour. As the storm gets farther north, its speed can increase up to 60 miles per hour. Hurricanes can travel hundreds of miles each day. Which part of the hurricane is the strongest? The, front, the right front corner is strongest because the whirling winds are circling towards the shore. They add their strength to the winds that move the storm forward. This says a hurricane moves like a top spinning across the floor. It moves two ways. It spins around and it travels forward. So it spins and travels forward. Headed straight for the land. Okay, this doesn't have any text other than the um, text features. Arnold should be reaching land any minute now. Let's take a spin. The hurricane should be reaching land any minute now. We must evacuate before the floods come. Tell me about it. Another word by Dorothy Ann. When people evacuate an area, they get out of there fast. As the hurricane approached land, the wind pulled up the trees by the roots and blew the roofs off of houses. It also blew ashore a huge dome of water called the storm surge. The ocean rose 10 feet higher than usual, and on top of that, there were giant waves. We were horrified as we watched the storm surge sweep over the shore below. Hurricanes then and now by Ralphie. In the past, there was less property damage. Today, coastal areas are more built up. So the more houses and buildings, there's more to damage in hurricanes. In the past, people didn't know if a hurricane was coming. Today, weather reports warn people if people are about to evacuate in time. If people are able to evacuate in time, these warning, warnings can save lives. Look, they sometimes sandbag. They put sandbags here, and they board up windows, and then they evacuate. They go. This says, flooding from the storm surge often causes more damage than the wind. Class. <clears throat> it is also responsible for more loss of life. Look down. It's horrible. The water is coming in. So you could see, like, what the water in the hurricane is doing to the land. To the land on the shore. That's about all it goes, to the land on the shore. But that was nothing compared to the horror we felt when we heard the phrase shouting about the sound of roaring water. We seemed to be running out of gas, children. Sure enough, the plane was dipping lower and lower. Maybe we can help someone. As we fell into the water, we saw Arnold waving to us from a nearby roof. That kid looks familiar. That plane looks familiar. Arnold, we need to evacuate now. Somehow Arnold managed to get on the plane before we were swept away by the waves at the front edge of the hurricane. The water was creeping up the windows. The plane was going to sink for sure. Then we saw a dark funnel shape coming our way. What is a tornado by Arnold? A tornado is a twisting funnel shaped whirlwind that hangs from a thundercloud. There's a huge thundercloud. We fell into the ocean. We flew into the eye. A fishing boat picked us up. The eye wall was the worst. We thought we were goners. We thought we were goners. We are goners. Let's see what happens. Uh oh. I've seen that shape on TV, said Ralphie. I read about it in a book, said Keisha. The twister came right for us. The next thing we knew, it had picked us up, and we were traveling by a tornado. It says, tornadoes often occur at the edges of hurricanes that are moving over land, class. Are tornadoes and hurricanes alike? Yes and no. Tornadoes and hurricanes are both whirlwinds, but tornadoes are much smaller than hurricanes. 
have faster winds for the most part, and destroy almost everything in their path. Tornadoes can twist at speeds of 200 to 300 miles per hour. So after reading that, which is, which is faster? Uh-huh. A typical tornado has a short lifespan, only a few minutes. I think my lifespan just got shorter. I'm sure they are at the gas station. I bet they're feeling better, better about themselves. After a while, we felt a bump and looked around. The tornado had set us down gently. We were in our old school bus again. We were dressed in our regular clothes again. The hurricane was over and we were at the gas station. Can tornadoes really carry objects? By Keisha. Yes, tornadoes are like giant vacuum cleaners. They lift dirt, trash, and even large objects, such as houses, cars, trees, and railroad trains. Once a tornado picked up a crate of eggs and set them down miles away, not one egg was broken. Usually the things that are picked up by a tornado are broken apart, but not always. Miss Frisk picked up the tank and drove down the road, as if nothing had happened. As I said earlier, class, we're on our way to visit the weather station, she said. Oh my gosh. Take our case, for example. We're all okay. Even the radio is still working fine. Here's a treat just for you, Arnold. Another weather update. That depends on what you mean by working fine, says Arthur. Thanks, Arthur. You're there at the weather station. The weather forecasters at the station had a lot to tell us about the hurricanes. We had a lot to tell them, too. Hurricane winds swirl in a circle because of the rotation of the earth. Hey, that's right. So they learned a whole lot. It says a hurricane from start to finish. One, hot air rises over tropical oceans near the equator. Two, thunder clouds form. Three, winds begin circling around the eye of the storm. Four, the storm travels. They learned that. Unfortunately, the hard way. A hurricane dies as it moves over the land because, the kids say, there is no more hot, moist ocean air to fuel the storm. The kids know a lot about hurricanes, don't they, Hell, That radio spoke to me. How did it know my name? I knew I should have stayed home today. Who is he like? Okay, number five. Circling winds increase to 74 miles per hour or more. If a hurricane reaches shore, land is flooded by storm surge. And seven, hurricane fades gradually as it moves inland or on land. Finally, we drove back to school and finished our weather reports. The future of, hur future of hurricanes, bigger and stronger by Amanda Jane. During times when the earth is warmer, hurricanes become stronger. The temperature of the earth is going up. Uh-oh. Global warming means fiercer hurricanes. Oh no, I can't take it anymore. It says three bad things hurricanes do. They hurt people, they destroy property, and they make floods. Three good things hurricanes do. They balance the earth's temperature by drying away hot air. They bring rain to dry places, and they clean the air with falling rain. Excuse me. Here's a weather vane. Here's a rain gauge so that they can gauge and see how much rain fell. Here's this page. Make a twister in a bottle. And here's an ex explanation of how to make a twister in a bottle. I'm sure you've all done it before. Put water in a liter bottle. And for now, some music. What? No more weather? Cool. All right. I want to find out more about how to keep safe during hurricanes, tornadoes, and thunderstorms, says Wanda. How snowflakes form. What causes frost on window planes? panes, says Rachel. And what is fog, says Arnold. After that trip, we needed some time to relax. Miss Frizzle said we could have a party. We had games, great games, crazy dancing, and yummy snacks. And for a while, we didn't even think about Miss Frizzle's next trip. My Favorite Temperature by Carlos. It says 98.6 normal. <laughs> My Favorite Cloud by Shirley. It looked like a bunny. My Favorite Hailstorm by Arnold. It was safe in bed. Arnold likes safe. You dance quite well for a radio. It says, singing in the rain. It says, in Asia, a hurricane is called a typhoon. Did you know that? There's a different name for a hurricane in Asia. 
At my old school, our teacher never wore B shoes. All right, boys and girls, I really hope you, that was a long one. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please tune in to some more of my reading with Miss Miller's read-alouds. And if you like this one, give it a thumbs up. Thanks.